Welcome back to Qualitative Research. I am your host, Dr. June Gothberg from Western Michigan University. And today we're gonna to talk about reflexivity, bias, and bracketing. On our agenda is to answer the questions, what is reflexivity? What is meant by bias? What is bracketing? And then we'll look a little bit at how to bracket. So first, what is reflexivity? Simply put, reflexivity is an ability to critically evaluate oneself. It's a searching of self in the form of your attitudes, your thought processes, your values, your assumptions, your prejudices, and habitual actions. Ryan said that reflexivity is introspection in the moment. Flip said that reflexivity is important for reflecting on biases and preconceptions so that the researcher doesn't end up twisting around research data and making biased interpretations about that data. In essence, reflexivity is important for the mitigation of any unnatural influence on your research data. What's meant by bias? Bias is the tendency, that inclination, the prejudice in favor of or against a thing, a person, a group compared to another one. They are pervasive. They can only be identified through critical reflection and discussion. Biases tend to be unfair and taint your view. Biases naturally impose judgment. They can be positive or negative, depending on their nature. They can be explicit, meaning they can be conscious, or they can be implicit, meaning they are unconscious. When you examine your bias, you strengthen your self-awareness, you create space for new ideas. Examining your bias can assist you in demonstrating your professional accountability and it promotes sound research practice. To examine your bias, to just begin to do that, think deeply about your own biography. What is it that you bring as a researcher? Think about the experiences you've had, mindsets you may have, your worldview, your culture, your philosophical assumptions, and then as a researcher, you always have influence or power. So we talk about all of this in connection with our research, what the field of phenomenology has brought into qualitative research is this idea of bracketing. Bracketing is that process of setting aside your personal experiences, your biases, and your preconceived notions about the research topic of interest. It means you suspend your preconceptions, your beliefs, and you may even be able to suspend some of your prejudices so they don't influence the interpretation of the participants or respondents' experiences. Van Manen explained that this is the process through which the researcher brackets or isolates in order to be open to the experience itself. Now, I, provide, I like this uh, rationale that Tuford and Newman provide for bracketing. And they say that bracketing is that method that is used to mitigate the potential effects of those unknown preconceptions related to the research and thereby increase the rigor of your project. While bracketing can mitigate the adverse effects of the research endeavor, importantly, it also facilitates the researcher reaching deeper levels of reflection across all the stages of your research from selecting that topic, to designing your protocols, collecting and interpreting your data, and then finally to that reporting stage. 
Bracketing is being reflexive and bracketing is critical. We want to understand the views of the participants instead of making their views fit our views. We want to be open and we need to set aside previous research findings and theories about the topic of interest. Bracketing is also known as the epoche. And an epoche is an ancient Greek term typically translated to mean the suspension of judgment. It's attributed to Husserl in 1964, and it involves that phenomenological reduction. It's a process to develop a non-judgmental type study that will not impede your perceptions of the phenomenon that's at the heart of the study. I've shared here some of my favorite quotes uh, from this work, and I will let you read that on your own, but that will help you kind of understand the mindset of where this came from. So there's three basic steps or types of bracketing. The first is to create that dialogue with yourself, but sometimes that can involve all the researchers. The second step is to take memos or to have some sort of a bracketing journal. And then the third is to write it down in your report. So however you are reporting your data out to an audience, this idea of bracketing needs to become very transparent. When you think about that stage of dialogue, the dialogue takes place before the research is conducted. And it helps you to consider all you know about yourself, your personal biases, your past knowledge, your history, your experiences, um, anything that you bring to this uh, research topic. And these are some of the things that we've been thinking about in the past few weeks. When you're finished and these are written down, that is when we say we've bracketed. The second phase is around that memoing or that bracketing journal. This takes place during data collection, during analysis, and during the write-up of your findings. So as you progress through the research process, when you sense a bias, or preconceived notion, you need to make a note about it. You need to write it down. You need to be transparent. Ideally, this should be a step that is taken throughout the whole research process, and it helps you to document and keep records that assist with the trustworthiness of your project. Finally, in that last step, you need to bracket while you are in that creation of reporting out the findings. This may be in a report, this may be when you're at a conference and you're sharing. You need to be very transparent and allow others to be aware of your biases, your past experiences, the knowledge you bring to the table, maybe previous research you've conducted in this area. All of this assists others to reflect on you as they read your findings, interpretations, conclusions, and recommendations. So to conclude, I thought I would share um, a method that I have found to be really helpful, especially if you are just beginning down this road of bracketing. So Simon, in her book about the qualitative research project used for a dissertation, has some suggestions around creating a visual mind map of your bracketing. So she recommends these seven steps. First is to write down your idea or your research question, like in the center of a blank sheet of paper that captures what it is you're investigating. Then, brainstorming around other terms or ideas that relate to this central concept and write them down as branches. So you're going to visualize this, you're going to draw this. So you're going to create branches that stem from that main idea. 
each of these branches then um, you'll create sub branches that include your beliefs, your perceptions, your attitudes, and your views about these components that have been that first tier branch, which may be a word or a construct, something that you've created as a branch. As you write down your sub branches, your ideas, your beliefs, your perceptions, then Simon says you should draw connections between these various ones. So you may have written something down that you believe under one of the branches, but really it's a sub-branch for several. So starting to connect the dots between those. And then she encourages you to continue jotting, jotting down terms and drawing connections without pausing, without thinking, without editing. Just do this exhaustive dump of all your ideas that are central around this topic. You can use additional paper if needed, and often it is. And then once you've completed it, once you've exhausted all of your ideas, then, and you've made those connections, then reread your map. List any more connections that come up, or list things that reoccur or are prominent. And then as a final step, and this one is the one that really brings some ahas, is to create a new mind map with the same branches. And then think about somebody who has an opposing view, how they might see these. Or what can be really powerful is to bring somebody into this discussion that you know has an opposing view, show them your mind map, and get some of their input. All of this can help you to bracket. Now some of us are very much a draw type person, a drawing type person, like sticky notes and, and colorful markers and highlighters. Others of us really appreciate the, um, the electronic versions of being able to do this. So I've provided you two visuals to see how two different students had started this exercise. Now this is very preliminary, it doesn't get to the opposing view, but this gives you some ideas around um, how you could begin to do this. If you are more of the type that likes the, uh, the electronic version, the online version over on the left, then I would encourage you to do a search for mind mapping on the internet, on a Google search, what have you. And there are several products out there. Each of them have their own nuances and they range from free to use for a month to paid uh, subscriptions for larger type corporations. Also know, since you have access to Invivo, that it's possible to create mind maps in Invivo. Then on the right is the more traditional type mind mapping activity. A lot of times it's drawn with bubbles or um, boxes that connect out, but you can see uh, the steps that were taken here for someone that was just thinking about the gun control topic and where they were coming from. So I hope this helps you with your next steps towards bracketing uh, for your qualitative research project. And thank you and go Broncos.